often. We haven't had a chance to spend much time together no. this time around. Like, how many pickleball games have we had? No shit. One. Chilling me. Dan and I have played one since we didn't invite there. us. Nope. It was in our crappy little court the day that wasn't windy. Like, right. I'll stop. You better get ready. This week on Rock Awakening, Power Exchange Couples, Kevin and Katie, and Yuma Boobs. Welcome to Erotic Awakening, an exploration of all things erotic. If you are something something, <laughs> offended and by you are offended by adult topics or prohibited by law, we recommend you stop listening right now. We want to thank our latest patron supporters, Jeremy. Head over to patreon.com slash erotic awakening today and get your bonus content and support the show. Hi, Don. Hi, Dan. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Katie. Hi, Katie. Hi Kevin. Hi, guys. Hi, <laughs> <Lettuce>. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> yes uh so this is called stealth podcasting i guess i just kind of set a microphone out in the middle of the table but we were talking about something else they had no clue. this microphone is here for another purpose we've yes, been assassinated with a podcast <laughs> so this week What's on the Rock Rick podcast kevin and katie are joining us whether they like it or not although so far kevin has taken the course of i ain't saying a damn thing they got me on this podcast <laughs> You can't um, make me dog. <laughs> Oops. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> and we just, so we are in the midst of writing, well, wrapping up writing the book that we are writing with the Kevin and Katie Lead, Follow, Love. And there are just so many great questions that were brought to be included in the book that we didn't get to all of them. But one of them that struck me as kind of interesting that I'd actually like to talk to Kevin and Katie about is this idea of... Oh, <laughs> the question uh, disappeared. It's funny that'll teach you the stealth podcast. The the actual question disappeared, but here it is on this nice piece of paper. It okay. says, "Do you and your partner have mutual close friends as couples? Do you have any people you that you hang out with that are close couples? And in this case, we're going to say couples because we are a power exchange couple. Mm -hmm. You guys are a power exchange couple. Do you have any couples that you're close to?" that are not aligned with power exchange. Wow, and they might hear this and might realize they're not been listed. Who do we, can you give us a second while you talk about yours? Well, yes. Since well, we've been sideswiped. And that's Dawn and I were just talking about how most of the couples that we consider um, that we are close to, mm -hmm. right, are at least power exchange aware or adjacent or something or practice some form of yeah. power exchange granted t-rex ties and tracy do not follow the same style of power exchange that but we they do. Are, are power yeah, exchange. they are in a, a power exchange relationship the other couple that i just mentioned over in the carolinas they're absolutely power exchange and closer to what we closer live to our in style. power exchange but not the same but not the same the couple that we mentioned back home, they're not in a power exchange together, but they have power exchange relationships with other people. Right. Other people. <laughs> <laughs> the word wasn't coming out. I felt like a bird. And, and the funny thing <laughs> is that we can, we can mention a couple others as well. But... but we don't have hardly anybody in our life that is not part of the community. I'm on a Facebook group right now that's like, so how do you guys do this with your vanilla friends? And I'm like, I I don't have vanilla friends anymore. Even my spiritual friends are kinky mm -hmm. or power exchange or something. I, I don't. And, and we see that it seems to be somewhat common because if you think about MD and Minkari, mm -hmm. you know, when, when I'm talking to Minkari and she's like, oh, we're going out with these people, these mm -hmm. people, these. Now, sometimes there's, you know, individuals, but for the most part, we're it's hanging couples. out with other couples. Yeah. And there are other power exchange couples mm -hmm. of some flavor. Yeah. I think I'm ready. Are you ready? Dig in, girl. All right. I would say at this point, now that Kevin has been retired from being a in the professional world, um, most of our long-lasting friendships have been with couples that are at least aware and we can behave authentically with and not have to be really guarded with our words. So accepting of it is kind of one of the baselines of having a long lasting friendship. I think that would be, they are almost all tinky, maybe you would say, um, and accepting of authority transfer as 
a kink variant that they can like yeah. be be, be cool understanding with. and yeah. cool with. Mm-hmm. And the closer relationships that get that get kind of just have more resonance to them are ones that are also very introspective about relationships mm-hmm. and and have the customized mm-hmm. relationship and and so yeah, but very few and very selective on that. And the, one of the interesting things is now that we are in a retirement community here, make it shorter. No, I think, <laughs> no, I'm saying careful about. Like gesturing, oh, on, gesturing the table. on the table. I thought he was like, box it up, Katie, make it a little one. Make it a little one. We are now in a retirement community where we're teaching fitness classes and we're meeting couples mm-hmm. that are interested in that part of our life. And so we tend to just say, is this a friendship? Could we actually, and we do, we'll go on a hike or go out for dinner and we test the waters of, do we have enough compatible compatibility in other aspects of our life to have friendship? And so far that has gone very short distances mm-hmm. and we find that we run into where, where we're not having those conversations we're used to yeah i think like, the, the other aspect of it being if you're going to be in a long-term relationship a long-term power exchange relationship you need other long-term power exchange people around you because it's not always great sometimes when things are a little bit rocky you want to be able to reflect with your friends honestly and saying we're having a problem blah 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 and for them to understand well and beyond that like going to a weekend conference or something, being around other people that are doing it helps inspire, mm-hmm. helps re-energize, helps helps keep you on track where if you are solo running an AT relationship and everyone around you is vanilla, it's easy to get infected yes. with, <laughs> with, with vanilla, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> And, and changing the episode name infected with vanilla. <laughs> <mentioned anything. laughs> um but there's a flip side to that one. Okay. Because like I was in a very cult-like faith and they were like, do not associate outside this because it's going to oh, yeah. it's going to dilute what you have and 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 your relationship with God is being in I won't touch the pens anymore, is being in like <laughs> that was Kevin, that wasn't me, Perfect. dear <laughs> listeners. I don't feel like going and associate associating with the others mm-hmm. like if, if we have that alignment of oh i love to hike and i love mm-hmm. to talk about whether it's you know fitness or health or personal growth and stuff if i get enough alignment it doesn't have to be about relationship styles and we can even be kind of tampered down with our interactions as leader follower although they have to be some level of accepting we we yes Katie put up a, hey, we love board games and and health and fitness kind of connection thing. We invited a nice couple over, had a great evening with them. Yeah. But you made a joke like when I when I say breathing from your diaphragm, I don't mean your birth control or something, right? <laughs> your birth canal. <laughs> no, the birth control is a, a birth diaphragm. Control. Remember oh, those that's oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, and they were kind of like, uh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> and and we were like obviously you can't make that was that was the test right now there. now you can't make knob polishing jokes and know it'll be okay <laughs> right? I mean, um the, there yeah how there much do has to, to be some amount of yeah acceptance of the fact that you go brawless or the acceptance of the fact that i i've got you know a, a little naked figurine beside my computer or whatever and if if they are too divergent from us it even if we have a lot of things in common like fitness and board games it, we we have to do be, be too inauthentic right yeah. there's there's not going to be a point where, yeah. where the two followers are off to the side and one say oh wow well, I, I know that kevin doesn't want you to go shopping so i'll tell him that you're coming over to my house so we can sneak out and go shopping oh, right right unthinkable yeah unthinkable can't can't even fathom so no but it's awesome when you have friends that you can talk about like anything I mean because even your fitness classes maybe you want to talk about how you slipped up today and said sir and then (laughs) around to see if anybody heard you I called it did I yes okay (laughs) (laughs) yes and I'm here like (laughs) no one knows what that means right so, but it would be cool if you could talk to someone about fitness and power exchange mm-hmm. and, or not even have to have those deep conversations like we like having, but any reference to it. I mean, if you're always afraid of offending someone, you, you or, or afraid of having them 
concerned for Katie. That's that, my yeah. Uh, that, that, that's the biggest thing to me is oh you know if if they're fretful about whether she's somehow abused or you're uh, domineering like, like, or like yeah. domineering thumb or something. Well, that's not you're so okay. domineering. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> super dominate. That's me. You know, <laughs> and and when I think about that, I don't get all defensive. I can empathetically be in that outside position for a mm -hmm. moment in my mind and think. Is, is that them thing, is that person okay? Is this an okay situation? Right. Is showing that they have compassion as a human. Sure. I, and, I, I sometimes see relationships where I can't decide whether, hey, look at them. They've probably got that going on too. They've, they're probably in an AT relationship or, wow, that was pretty fucking pushy out of that person uh, onto yeah. that other person. And yeah, I hope that's negotiated, not an asshole. Right, 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 right. right. So... I don't know. I just like having the deep conversations that we have. And I still think it would have been funny if we had chosen that question from the Kickstarter. I almost said Kickstarter. It got confused. <laughs> so when we were answering the question from that, that supporter, you know, because it also goes on to say, if so, could you share the story of how you met and cultivated a strong connection with them? Oh, and I have a feeling we have? <laughs> the four of us, well, I have a feeling that the four of us, if we chose that meeting, all of us would be talking about the same story. Of us all meeting. Of us all from meeting. Different perspectives. From different perspectives, right? Yeah. Kevin yeah. and Katie have gone to a workshop where right. I want to correct something. Not correct. You suggested another way of doing it, which is still in my head. Did I? I thought you've heard this story nine times. I but know. No, I but... thought we went up just to say, "Hey, you guys no, are kind of no, cool." No, no, no. No. So how I you remember it is, that we wanted to how I you. remember it was was sexy lady came up, which is what Dan called Katie, and and suit, suit guy. guy, suit guy and hot guy girl, and right? suit guy and hot girl. Yes, na, na, came na, up na, to na, us, na, 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 <laughs> and suit, suit guy, guy says. I'm a psychiatrist and psychologist. I have psychologist, psychologist, sorry. And I have a different way of presenting the breaking of habitual patterns Oh, because there's five steps to breaking habitual patterns and how we said it. There was one spot in there where the way you taught it was flipped, which makes perfect sense as well. Huh. Right. But that's how I remember that conversation. And the way you're looking at me says, you remember it totally different. I don't right? remember it all. I, <laughs> that's I, Kevin. I, I, we I remember walked, that. Yes, I Kevin just, does not. I thought we just walked up to say, hey, you guys are pretty cool. We should have dinner together. And, and so maybe it, you did and then followed it up with. And, and okay. also, we, we, were, we were nobodies. They were great presenters and the first presenters that we had on Power Exchange in right. any way. I think you thought of that as an icebreaker that we could actually go and have a conversation. But it was well, what? It and you heard it as correcting because you heard because that, that was psychologists uh, coming up. Right. 12 years ago. Yes. Or so. Oh, to be more so I think you yeah. thought it was a great icebreaker oh, yeah. of saying, hey, I teach that too. Right. This is the way I do that. But he wasn't like, you do it wrong because this is the right way because I've had the training. I mean, it wasn't right. an asshole. And, group, I had right? to, and I had to go to Dan and go, my ego took a hit. <laughs> but let's have dinner with them. Sounds like a good conversation. Yeah. That's funny because all I, my memory of this is blah, blah, blah. Let me introduce you to Dominion. It's not a habit. <laughs> this first deck's free. Do you, would you like to play more games? After that. Yeah. Really, and, so, yeah. Cool. You might be wondering where you can hear more of this Kevin and Katie interaction. And I would say, well, of course, we're going to highlight that on the newsletter, as well as all the other places that Dan and Don are presenting. So, and we're actually got our 2024 calendar pretty put together. We have Tucson, Maryland, Pennsylvania, Florida, and Ohio so you, far. You can keep up with all the events, book news, and discounts, and more via the Erotic Awakening newsletter. And get your EA shout out like Paralover in New York. John from California. Margaret from New Jersey. Ms. Suzanne from Canada. Head over to eroticawakening.com and subscribe today. So, Don, I don't know why it is listed here that we've had real sex. I've had many fake sexes. <laughs> oh no! But now we're having real sex. Why do we have to talk about that? Okay, so I'm I'm actually really excited. About I can this. tell. So yeah, so I have the clapping hands. hands. <laughs> right. There's not a lot that excites me, but this excites me. So real sex used to be a documentary on HBO. Right. And I can remember watching these episodes when they first came out in like the early '90s. 
you and me and my ex and your ex actually sat down and watched some of these together, right? So, and this is before we all like talked about sex or anything. We were all just friends. And so the real sex episode, I can remember, it was like episode two showed the woman that was being walked to someone's apartment and she had a long cape on and nothing underneath. And she was going to this place for a little spanking party. And I remember watching that little clip going, oh, oh, I like this. And this mm -hmm. was early 90s. This came out in the 90s. And not being able to speak up with my ex that I liked it, right? And then that gave me the tingles. And anyway, so I was watching this documentary. We'd had people in there that we know, Tristan Terramino, Barbara Corellis, people that we know from the Pony community in Columbus that have since passed and, you know, and all this stuff. And I've been looking for the episodes. I Googled, 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 cannot find them. HBO does not have them and doesn't like people to know that they used to do this documentary. Mm. Someone sent me a link to it yesterday. I went onto Facebook and someone found me an archived spot where all these episodes are. Oh, really? I'm going to be diving deep. Oh, yeah. I watched the spanking one last night and I watched the pony one and I watched the fetish ball one. That was exciting. It's like people gather and... Was it as good as the first time? Yeah. Because see, sometimes you go back to something... Cheesy music. Right. 15 years later and you're like, what did I get out of that? Right. I can't believe yeah. that I've watched movies that were my favorite movies 15 years later. Mm -hmm. And I was like, lady, 15 lady. years lady. <laughs> yeah. later. Yeah. And was right. Like, well, I only watched three clips because I, I went on to another site that told me where all the pieces were that I was looking for in which um, episode, because it's like 10 things on one episode. They're just little clips. And is that uh, the one where they take mangoes and they chop them apart and take the pit out and everybody practices oral sex on women I bet you. by licking it? Uh, that sounds uh, kind of familiar, but that's where I, I discovered Annie Sprinkles, who used to do the goddess slut workshop. And Annie did, Sprinkles, is she like a porn star? She was a porn star. She's now an environmental, spiritual goddess. Hold on. I like how Annie keeps trying to make jokes, but they're all so fucking enthusiastic so, about this. Yeah, 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 she's a porn star. Annie she's Sprinkles. Really you know what's so funny about Annie Sprinkles? Is like she's back in the 90s, right? Yeah. So that's kind of like the Olympic skaters where they used to do like a double sow cow back in the day before the skates got great and everything else. So back in that day, they used to sprinkle. And now with the extra equipment and training, now they they squirt right so there'll be annie squirt no. in the 20 year 2020 right, right. now katie no, no. <laughs> i will say the the one thing that i remember from real sex especially that spanking episode mm -hmm. and this is something that changed during the course of the documentary was that spanking episode had people real people it was real people not yeah. stars no no but this here's the, the interesting bit. these yeah. are average sized people people yeah. you know anyone else what we found out later, they did an episode on pony play and some friends of ours were there to, but they wanted the friends, once they've invited them out, it's a no-no friends, you're- You're too chubby. Yes. And, and we have these we have these models here yeah. that are gonna dress up in the pony gear and pretend to be. I'm so, disappointed. And I watched it because I know who one of the professionals was. So I watched that clip last night and I'm like, oh, there's the person I know. Oh, there's the person I know. Oh, there's the person I know. And then the models would come across and I couldn't pick out because they were in the face gear as well. That's I couldn't even I couldn't yeah, figure I thought out so too. who was who. But yeah, so, they were very so upset. They become that. they became subject matter experts rather than exactly. actually be people doing the right, thing. Right. right. But because I knew them and knew what to look for, I could spot them in the, the extras. So they didn't get a chance to talk. It was the models that actually talked. Annie, if you've changed your name to Annie Squirter, contact me. It's not, it's still Annie Sprinkles. I still get emails from her. Other she than... does goddess priestess stuff. Oh, with, so she's with like the a rock person then. And yeah. Now, yes. you know, yeah. Barbara oh. Morellis is on there, and I gave her a car ride at the last AIS. I'm event. going to look you up, Annie Sprinkles. Yes. Oh, she's am she's amazing. I'm all excited. I can see that. <laughs> Other than that, we have no tentacles, no food on boobs to share. That's and okay. That's okay. That's but okay. Trevair, have... Trevair sent me werewolf stories. I know. <laughs> I actually am quite looking forward to how you, you ingest those. Yeah. Shapeshifter porn. Yes. And, <laughs> and quite the primal type stuff. Yes. Regards. You guys ever do primal play? Do you guys consider your play primal? I would consider theirs primal. It's funny because I would say so too, but I bet you guys don't use that terminology. We don't use that terminology. There's a lot of dominant energy to yeah. it. Yeah. 
but I don't ent- identify as any kind of animals, but would you call that primal? I call it more just domination. Well, it, it, it's, it's, <laughs> wow. No, that was, I could not that, see that. That sounds that was, more like, that, hand gestures that sounds and... like more like squid play or something. <laughs> yeah. that's, 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 that. that's my tentacle sex going yeah. on, right? Would you call it primal play? I would, I would say that it was primal in that it is like trancy and powerful and mm-hmm. and like tribal almost kind of lots with rhythm, like pounding a, like beat a pounding beat and an ordeal and yeah. and lots of physical energy and mm-hmm. but it's it's not primal like I don't I don't grapple you I don't bite you I don't ravage you exactly I yes. just <laughs> which is an talk. idea <laughs> <laughs> Be part of the Erotic Awakening community. You can support us on Patreon and get early access to the podcast, a free version of the audio book, Polyamory Toolkit, free ebooks, member-only Discord access, and more. Find all the goodies at patreon.com slash erotic awakening today. Help others find us. That was uh, some neuro-linguistic programming language. There. Was it? Yeah, don't just do it. Do it today. Do it today. There's an exclamation point at the end. Well, there's also one after help others find us. Take a moment to support the podcast. Rate us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, or wherever you listen. Or just none of that shit has to do with us. Also, buy the book, Lead, Follow, Love. Ooh, that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Join the conversation with us and other listeners. Use the links from the Erotic Awakening website for our growing Discord channel. Feel free to reach out to us. Contact us with questions, podcast comments, or just to say hi. We are Dan and Dawn on FetLife. And Erotic Awakening on Instagram. Or just email us at Dan and Dawn at eroticawakening.com. Bye, Dan. Bye, Dawn. Bye, Kevin. Bye, Kevin. Bye, guys. You've been sideswiped. All right, now we are going to do 